I have given a lengthy presentation of a very simple uh, problem, uh, the simple tube connected to a SDOF system. And this is because it, it is a very good framework for thinking about more complicated problems. More complicated vibroacoustic uh, problems would, for instance, be the uh, coupled analysis of a car body and the uh, air in the passenger compartment to understand the uh, passenger comfort and uh, sound issues in, uh, in cars. For instance, here you see an actual finite element model of both the structure of the car, the car body, and the uh, passenger compartment. Now, this is not a course about finite element, but you have certainly had an exposure to uh, finite elements, and you know, for instance, that for a structure, uh, we can build from the finite element model three matrices, the stiffness matrix, the mass matrix, and the damping uh, matrix. And that in the frequency domain, the dynamic equations for representing the structure is a complex matrix, which is the stiffness matrix plus I omega times the damping matrix minus omega squared times the mass matrix. This overall is called uh, the mechanical or the structural impedance matrix, and we'll denote that by ZS. Uh, and this matrix multiplied by the unknown uh, displacement is equal to the externally applied forces Fs. Well, exactly the same type of equation can be built uh, on the basis of the acoustic finite element model. And you will have what is called by analogy an acoustic or fluid uh, stiffness matrix, an acoustic damping matrix, and an acoustic mass matrix. And the same type of equation will hold. So we'll have Kf plus I omega Cf minus omega square Mf. This is the acoustical impedance matrix multiplied by the unknown pressure at the nose of the finite element mesh is equal to the uh, acoustical excitation. Now, I will assume here that we only have mechanical excitations and that the sound field is only created by the vibrations of the structure. So I will set FF to zero. Now, these are what is called uncoupled equation. The first set of equations describes the structure. The second set of equations represents the, the fluid, the acoustic fluid. And so to create a coupling, a coupled system, we have to uh, write a relationship between the two sets of unknown between displacement and pressure. And we know that there are actually two mechanisms that uh, that must be represented. First, the sound field, the acoustic pressure, represents a load on the structure. That's what we've seen before. And we can write that uh, simply as uh, an additional force vector acting on the structure must be taken into account, which is proportional, which can be deduced proportionally from the uh, pressure uh, vector uh, using an impedance, uh, using an interpolation matrix C or a coupling matrix C. But we also know that vibrations are generating noise, and so there must be some kind of acoustical excitation which is proportional to the, uh, the amplitude of the displacement vector at the interface between the, the, the structural mesh and the acoustic finite element mesh. And trust me, uh, this additional force vector is equal to rho omega square times the transpose of the coupling matrix times the displacement. So we have an equation for the structure, an equation for the fluid, but now we have two additional terms, an additional load on the structure which is proportional to the acoustic field, and a load in the fluid which is proportional to the displacement. If we in include these additional loading in the equations and put all the unknowns on the right hand side, what you see is that we end up with a much larger system of equation which involves both the displacement degrees of freedom and the pressure degrees of freedom and that is a much larger matrix 
where you have in the uh, diagonal blocks the mechanical impedance matrix and acoustical impedance matrix and in the two off diagonal blocks you have the coupling matrices and if you solve that system of equation you will get the displacement and the pressure field at once taking into account the fact that the pressure loads the structure and the structure excites the fluid. Now, I have written uh, the, exactly the same system but using more compact notation. So I've introduced the uh, structural stiffness matrix ZS and the, the acoustic stiffness matrix ZF. And you see that the second set of equations is homogeneous because I have considered that there are no acoustic sources other than the vibrations of the structure. So the second equation can be written explicitly, rho omega square C transpose times U plus ZF times P is equal to zero. And formally, this equation can be solved for the pressure to obtain that the pressure field is minus rho omega square times the inverse of the uh, acoustic stiffness matrix times the transpose of the coupling matrix times the displacement vector. And if I put that into the first equation, I now obtain an equation where the pressure unknowns has been eliminated and I see that I have a modified impedance matrix multiplying the displacement equal uh, forces. And this modified impedance matrix, rho omega square C times ZF minus 1 times CT, uh, I call the radiation impedance matrix and I denote zeta A. And so we have now a modified equation which is ZS minus zeta A times U is equal to F. And coming back to my simple tube model, this is exactly what we had ex obtained also. So you see here very clearly uh, the similitude between the most simple and the most complex problems in vibroacoustics. The effect of the fluid is always to modify the impedance of the system. If it's a one degree of freedom system, the modified impedance uh, is, is a scalar component for more complex systems modeled by the finite element, these are all matrices. But the idea is always the same. The presence of the fluid, the influence of the sound field, creates an additional term uh, to the uh, impedance of the system.